Hi everybody. So I've completed the first piece of my King Air project and it's the uh, the center console. But before I get to that, um, I wanted to talk about my change from using SimVim to talk to the Arduino uh, over to Air Manager. And the reason I switched is uh, SimVim is a great piece of kit uh, and the software saves you from having to write a lot of code for yourself which is great but unfortunately you are at the whim of uh, the gentleman Vlad who uh, looks after SimVim and owns SimVim and, uh, and really gives things for free unless you want to pay for it on Patreon and um, it takes a little while for him to make a change or incorporate features that are not generic through most aircraft so for my airfoil labs which is what I want to use um, because I like the sounds and I like the systems are better than anything else I've seen I really don't have a choice but to um, either wait for Vlad to add these things to SimVim or to code it up myself. So I ended up in Air Manager and uh, as you can see I've got my Arduino connected here and inside the hardware instrument here is all the code which is talking to my center console um, which I'll show in just a moment. Uh, I used to be a computer programmer for, by trade so this Lua script really is no big deal and to be honest it's fairly simple once you you get your head around the syntax I'm also using Air Manager anyway for my panel uh, and some of the default instruments that you get with Air Manager I've had to customize to work with the Airfoil Labs because Airfoil Labs use different data refs and uh, it just adds a little bit of complexity so if I move this out of the way the actual panel will appear on a monitor at least at first um, and the the PFD and MFD will be pop outs of the actual gauges from the airfoil labs and I found the performance actually uh, it works pretty well so let's jump over and have a look at the center console actually working okay so here is the almost finished center console it functionally works there's a little bit of aesthetics uh, maybe the, there'll be no P2 in this simulator, it'll just be a single pilot. So this will either get a plate over the top or a place for pens and iPads. Maybe I'll make a little pocket. These top two units are real units, which I stripped the insides out of and rewired for the Arduino. This is out of a 727. Don't know where this came from. Both needed cleaning up and they're, they're still knocked about, but it's quite cool to have real units. And everything else is 3D printed. Um, I designed it all apart from this unit which um, I got from Thingiverse and it was also earlier in my printing so the print quality is not so great uh, and you know there are a few things like these buttons can be better this should be a, a half a degree not 1 over 20 so improvements and maybe a second version but for now uh, it does actually work so let's get the uh, PFD and MFD power on and you'll see that these will fade in uh, in just a moment and you know things like that are the reason why I'm using those pop-outs rather than an air manager gauge or something else because I just like that realism of it so let's work our way down um, heading control as you'd expect uh, push to center you've got a course control and uh, the push is to go direct but we don't have anything valid uh, tuned to go to direct to right now and um, let's see the nav data cycles the top right of the MFD and if you're on ET, you can press the the elapsed timer button and it starts and stops and resets the timer. I like to have that on the wind. Uh, you have course control. Are we controlling uh, navigating from VOR1? Oh, sorry, that switches the course on and off. Uh, what I'm thinking of is course act, which is VOR1, 2, FMS, nothing, or VOR1 again. Um, I never use the other modes in the uh, airfoil lab, so this isn't connected to anything. Uh, and therefore neither is the select range but the decision height works and let's see what else do we have RA test and I'm trying to remember exactly what that does it looks like it's not working right now we'll check that out um, bearing you can show a bearing pointer to um, VOR1 to FMS or the ADF and um, course transfer I don't use very much you can pre-select a course for VOR2 and now this makes our course selector uh, 
There we go. Controls the pre-course now. I'll switch that back to normal. Switch off the pre-course. There we go. These dim the uh, MFD and the PFD are dimmable. Not sure that I'll ever use those in the sim, but but there they are. So in the real unit, you've got some some more amber lights. These are all green. You can select heading. You can put things in arm. When they're in arm mode, uh, they're a little bit dimmer than the actual modes. So there's approach and GS dim while it's in heading mode. But these all work the way you'd expect. Uh, this let me just pan down to the uh, this autopilot controller works. The real one has like a detent I've since learned underneath this, but this is just free right now. Um, then we've got autopilot on, which is on the autopilot and the ore damper. And uh, we've also got this little trim fail light, which is because I don't have the trim power on. So let's switch that on. You should see the light will go out. I have to recycle this. Use the flashing disconnect lights. So actually, I'm not sure why that trim light is on. There's something else I've missed. But uh, as you can see, it's on in the sim, so it's supposed to be on in the in here as well. Probably because we're on the ground and it's trying to trim something that's not possible. Let's go back to the panel. So the EFIS test does work. If you hold this and hold it and hold it, you get a slightly different mode. There we go. All the fail modes come up. And let's go back down to the other panel. And you can see the cabin pressure dump and test work the way that they're supposed to. Same with the yaw control test. Now, uh, yaw control test should disconnect the yaw damper. Put the yaw damper on. There you go. It does work. And then this cabin alt selector. Now, you see in the sim it's a little bit jerky. And uh, th that's because the resolution of these, the potentiometers I ended up using in the Arduino are not the best. But uh, it is close enough for simulated flight. And you should also see if I can get my view right that the rate knob works as well. So uh, there we go. That is a, a quick overview of my my panel. Aha, is it the AC bus? Is that what was wrong with the trim? All right, let's check again. So, um, it's trims on. Cycle it. And there you go. And this is just the trim is in motion because the autopilot is trying to control the aircraft. So that's what that was about. If you switch it off, you're going to get a trim failure. So there we go. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, next will probably be the switch panel. Thanks for watching. See you again.